looks good. Hey, what's up guys? Sam here, and today we're talking about some iOS 15 rumors and some stuff for the new MacBooks. There is really good news that I wanna share in this video about both iOS 15 and the new MacBook Pro. So if you're excited, drop a like down below. And of course, hit subscribe so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. Make sure you tap the bell as well. Tap the bell as well. Tap the bell as well. First up though, before jumping into any of that, there's a fresh episode of Genius Bar right now. It's a podcast I do every single week with John Prosser and it's a really good episode this week. So I'll leave a link to the YouTube channel down below if you guys wanna hear more long form stuff. Um, we do it every week, it's really, really fun. So link to the channel down below, love you guys. Kicking things off today, there's a fresh iOS update out there. Get going, go get her, go, go get it. It's out now. iOS 14.6 was just released alongside macOS 11.4, a new version of watchOS, whatever we're on there, new tvOS. Uh, but I wanna just really quickly run through iOS 14.6 because I feel like you've probably haven't heard anything about it. Like I didn't even hear anything about it. And this is my job. Basically, there's just a couple new features. One, there's support for the new Apple Music Hi-Fi and spatial audio, but it's not out yet. Apple said it's coming in June. So it seems like it'll be enabled server side or something. Just make sure you're updated and you can get access to the new version of Apple Music when it launches. Next up is, I don't know why this is funny to me, but Apple Card family is here. So like, you can literally take mom's credit card now and just spend it on video games if you're in the family and if it is shared with you. I'm sure there's a way to send like set limits and stuff because that that, that could that could be dangerous. This is actually a pretty cool feature though because now like other members of your family on your iCloud account can use the same Apple card and it's shared securely. It's a pretty good idea. That's in this update as well as paid podcast subscriptions. I'm not a huge fan of that just because I don't know, paywalls are getting a bit out of control if you ask me, but if you want to subscribe to new shows or pay creators for their shows, you can do that now in, in the updated podcast app. Those are the big features. There've been some bug fixes as well, but nothing too notable. There have been a ton of security fixes though. So if there's one reason you update, a lot of vulnerabilities fixed and 14.6 alongside everything else keep you up to date with a couple of minor new features, but definitely not nearly as exciting as iOS 14.5. But this guy is gonna sit here and talk to you about Apple products all day. It's time for me to tell you the truth. He's got all kinds of STDs. He's real messed up, real dirty guy out there because he's been raw dog in the internet, guys. He hasn't been using WeVPN. Listen, you guys know WeVPN. They're the guys that came from all the other VPN companies doing sketchy stuff with your data to create a fundamentally better product that was one of the best, fastest, and most reliable options on the entire market. And recently I've heard some birds trip outside, which means that it's spring and WeVPN has launched their spring sale for the two years plan, which gets you 73% off and two months for free at only $2.69 a month. This gives you access to all their premium features, over 50 server locations around the world, and even the ability to unblock content from Netflix, Hulu, BBC iPlayer, and so much more. And when you enter the code IUPDATE at checkout, you get an additional 10% off. So my challenge is this, whether you've been using a different VPN for years, yuck, or this is your first time hearing about a VPN, head over to wevpn.com slash iUpdate today if you trust me, if you like what I do here, and start staying safer online. Now looking at the calendar, I didn't realize this until today, but WWDC is happening in thir thir 13, that's my, that's 13. We are only 13 days away from Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference, and for me, it's always my favorite event of the year because we're seeing new software, and sometimes, well, sometimes we get new hardware. And this year, this year we're getting both. It's gonna be a big one. And Apple has subtly hinted at this by doing something that I don't think they've ever done before, which is essentially showing us some of iOS 15 early. I'm not talking about a rumor or a leak. I'm talking about an official news room release from Apple. And while the center of this was about new accessibility features, some of which are really cool, like new pinching and clenching features to control the Apple Watch with assistive touch, we get a look at some of the new UI elements coming in iOS 15. Number one, in apps like settings, everything's gonna be inset now, which is actually how it was pre iOS 7. But since iOS 7, it's gone edge to edge. It's gonna look like how it does on iPad OS, and I'm actually a huge fan of this. To me, this just looks so clean and it's a subtle change, but it's so common that you see cells on iOS like this or like tables, UIs, that it's gonna make it feel really fresh. And I hope we get new icons. I hope we can change icons more easily and theme as we can now. That's not in here. I'm just dreaming, but the table cells seem to be confirmed again. 
Nothing else that's out right now looks like this, even the developer or public betas. The second thing we get a look at in this accessibility press release is about the navigation bar and the background being joined together. You know how for like the longest time in iOS, it would always be two-tone. There'd be like the white at the top of your screen and then gray. Now it looks like this is combined and we've seen this in a couple of screenshots as well in Safari in this UI, also for like the new audiogram features that are coming in iOS 15. I, again, I think this looks Great, it's just so nice to see some fundamental changes to how iOS looks. For me, things have gotten a bit stale and I think that this is really tasteful, but it's subtle enough to where I think everybody would agree it looks better. And up until now, this is like almost all we've seen for iOS 15. I mean, we've got a couple of rumors from like Mark Gurman about it, but not much. Not much at all for iOS 15. And the fact that Apple pre-announced this told me right away that WWDC was gonna be big. And more importantly, that it would probably be more than just software. And it's going to be. Just in April, we got the new M1 iMacs. And while it's phenomenal, myself, uh, John Prosser, many others that do the kind of work that we do are like, we love it. We just want a little bit of extra power, right? And there's been a big question about when that's actually coming. Is it gonna be this year in 2021? Is Apple just gonna put M1 in everything this year? Or are we gonna get something sooner rather than later like an M1X? And recently we've gotten two super credible sources that have told us that MacBooks are coming soon. Mark Gurman, who's 90% accurate, has said that they're coming this summer. John Prosser, being a bit more specific, who says he has been told that the MacBook Pros are actually coming at WWDC. So the redesigned MacBook Pro, like arguably what is Apple's most popular, most important machine for Apple Silicon. It coming in less than two weeks. Woo! I didn't know I could spin all the way around. That was really fun. Let's go. This is incredible news. Even Apple has hinted at it by showing off some Unicode code for emoji characters. And it's like eat, sleep. And then there's a picture of a MacBook. There's MacBooks in the invites, some of which look like MacBook Pros. John Prosser quote tweeting the article today to confirm it saying, I can confirm MacBook Pro is coming. And this is going to be a crazy device. If you're like me, you might be saying, okay, this is great that like we know that it's coming in less than two weeks, but what is it gonna be? Is it just gonna be M1 like everything else? Or is this gonna be the first more powerful Apple Silicon? And that is the answer. It is going to have likely an M1X. They might call it something totally different or a different like S series chip. We don't know the marketing name, but we do know that it will have a significant amount of extra power when compared to the M1 and German came in recently with the details. While the M1 has an eight core processor, M1X will be 10 cores. So four efficiency cores for like power preservation and efficiency, six will be powerful to make the machine better. So we're getting two additional cores on the M1X. But the problem with M1 right now isn't necessarily that the CPU isn't powerful enough, it's the lack of graphics options. I mean, it's an eight core GPU, that's okay. But like, I can only play League of Legends on medium quality. Um, it, you know, it, it's not it's not doing it for video or gaming at all. The new MacBook Pro is going to double to 16 or quadruple to a 30 core GPU. So it sounds like we're gonna get options. Again, you have a seven or eight core option for the GPU and M1. M1X going up to 16 or 32. This is amazing news. My number one complaint about Apple Silicon is the graphics just not being powerful enough and that's getting alleviated. Something else that's kind of weird, right, is the fact that you can only get 16 gigabytes of RAM on any M1 device. Like professionals generally would like more RAM than that. And now it's gonna be configurable up to 64 gigabytes. Again, capped out at 16 now, quadrupling uh, to 64. So the power, the power is gonna be here in this computer and I am beyond excited to test it out because if, if we can get that in an iMac, it's actually game over for me and my bank account, not, not for anybody else, just for my bank account. And these specs are on top of MagSafe coming back to the MacBook Pro, on top of an HDMI port returning, and on top of an SD card slot return. I had to sit, I had to sit back on that one because this is fixing everything. All of my complaints about the 16 inch MacBook Pro or the 2019 or 2018 or 2017 or 2016 MacBook Pros that just weren't very good. I, I mean, I'm just so excited. I'm very reflective now as well, but I'm very, very stoked for this machine because it is going to be the one. 
I, I've been waiting for this for so long and it's coming in just a couple of weeks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, if you learned something new, drop a like down below. Of course, hit subscribe for more. I've been Sam. Hope all of you are doing well. I'll catch you cool cats in my next video. Peace. <laughs>